In the headlines, President Bola Tinubu's inaugural speech announcing end of fuel subsidy triggers fuel queues. NNPC welcomes move as Petroleum Regulatory Authority says it will ensure smooth transition to avoid supply disruptions. President Tinubu, Vice President Shatima resume work at Asu Rock. Colorful Daba stage in Daura to honor former President Bahari. And on the foreign scene, 17 civilians killed by extremist rebels in Eastern Congo. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I'm Dashen Husseina Usman. And now the news in detail. Fuel queues returned to filling stations in Abuja following President Bola Tinubu's inaugural speech that hinted fuel subsidy is gone as no provision is made beyond June this year. Kabir Lowell speaks to Nigerians that are now calling on the new president not to make life difficult for the people. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu in his inaugural speech on Monday said subsidy is gone. This prompted filling station to stop selling there by creating long queues in stations belonging to Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation Limited. Abuja residents called for caution in handling the full subsidy situation as any price hike will only worsen an already difficult situation. The country is not yet ready for this because before you remove subsidy, I'm sure they're supposed to have made some plans on the late plans of empowering, especially the youth. There are a lot of people that are not working. Even the workers, imagine someone earning less than 50,000. How can that person cope in this particular situation that we are in? The country is not yet ready. I'm sure he can do it. And then with the way I know him, he is someone that cannot be easily bended. He is someone that people cannot confuse him anyhow like that. So I believe with his promises, I, I believe he will fulfill it. Commuters also express fear that the subsidy removal will only make fuel available, but resultant price hike will certainly affect transport fare and price of essential commodities. It will affect a whole lot of people. It will affect the transportation because with the, um, the low-income earners, it's not too easy for us. Coming from our homes, so okay, today I was living in the house. There was no vehicle. I came today, to, okay, this is where I work. I want to buy fuel. No fuel. The finisher is closed right now. No fuel. I was able to buy a jai, but I had to struggle. People are even fighting. You understand? So, what all this, if we can tackle this thing, because apart from the fuel thing, people are hungry. People are starving. People are dying. No, but like, we, we just, people need help. People, people are so heavy. For now, the queues remain and car owners struggle to get fuel even though the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation and the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Agency have assured Nigerians of availability of the product. Despite the new president pronouncement on removal of subsidy, as you can see behind me, people have not heard sight of relief, especially the motorists, complaining that they don't know how the full pay price will be this time around. And also in front of me here is the AA Rano, the filling station is a goat of itself. It's not as if they are ordering the fuel, but they don't know the outcome of how fuel subsidy will be on them. Kabir Lawal, Trust TV News, Abuja. Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited and the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria defer on fuel subsidy removal announced by President Bola Tinubu. While NNPC Limited welcomes the move, Ipman insists the removal should be gradual. Chamunda Bang reports. Uh, challenge for NNPC is continued operation. We have been funding the subsidy from the cash flow of NNPC since government is unable to defray the cost of subsidy that is due to the corporation. And we believe that this will free resources for the NFC to continue to do the great work that this company will do for our country. And it allows us to continue to function as a very commercial entity. And we welcome this development. Secondly, we would like to assure Nigeria that we have sufficient supply of petroleum products, particularly petroleum motor spirit in our country. And there's no reason to panic. Uh, we understand people will be scared of potential changes to price of, uh, of petroleum. 
but that is not enough of people to rush the fuel stations to, to buy more than they need. But we are also assured that, you know, uh, watching all these future networks and uh, support facility, uh, we believe that uh, this will cut us in the next one soon. Thank you very much. President Bola Tinubu and Vice President Kashim Shatima on Tuesday afternoon resumed duty at the presidential villa in Abuja. Tinubu, whose vehicle entered the villa at 2.30 p.m. after Guards of Honor, was received by Shatima, Governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefile, Group Chief Executive Officer, Nigeria National Petroleum Company Limited, Mele Kiari, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabia Mila, Permanent Secretary State House Tijani Umar, former Lagos State Commissioner for Finance Wale Adun, and James Faleke, among others. Trust TV learned that the President will meet Emefile and Kiari after his announcement on Monday that the fuel subsidy had gone since the Buhari administration had phased it out before leaving office. The President has already met pronouncements yesterday on the issue of the fuel subsidy. The truth of the matter is that we either get rid of the fuel subsidy or the fuel subsidy gets rid of the Nigerian nation. In 2022, we spent $10 billion subsidizing the ostentatious lifestyle of the upper class of the society because you and I benefit 90% from the oil subsidy. The poor 40% of Nigerians benefit very little from the fuel subsidy. And we know the consequences of unveiling a masquerade. We'll get peers opposition from those benefiting from the oil scam, fuel subsidy scam. But where there is a will, there is a way. Be rest assured that our president is a man of strong will and conviction. And in the fullness of time, you'll come and, uh, to appreciate his noble intentions for the nation. That was the vice president, Kashim Shatima. Now, the House of Representatives has resolved to back President Bola Tinubu on the removal of subsidy on premium moto spirit, popularly known as fuel. The Green Chamber saluted the courage and boldness displayed by President Tinubu to serve the country with honesty and integrity while appealing to Nigerians to remain patient, resilient and prayerful to enable the newly sworn in president deliver on his promises. Members representing or member representing Lagos mainland federal constituency Jimo Olajide moved the motion supporting the president's move at plenary on Tuesday. Olajide said he is convinced that the president's plan to utilize subsidy funds realized to turn around the nation's education, health, infrastructure, agriculture, boost food security and above all secure lives and property. Lawmakers unanimously supported the motion throughout or through a voiced vote called by the, by the Speaker, Femi Bajabia Miller, at plenary. I therefore move that this House note that Mr. President Bola Hame Tinumbu on May 29, 2023, made a public pronouncement on fair subsidy removal. Further notes that President Tinobu is a concerned senior citizen whose agenda is to favor the down trading for the purpose of humanity. Aware that there is no provision for fair subsidy in the 2023 Appropriation Act. Further aware that the current Ninth Assembly and the past administration have been giving it a legal backing. Convinced that further legislative actions in supporting Mr. President in delivering dividend of democracy will go a long way in enhancing development because he asks for it, he campaigns for it, and is ready for the tax ahead. 
Senate Chief Whip Oji Uzokalu has admonished President Bola Tinubu to immediately concentrate on completing all abandoned projects in the country. Kalu, a former governor of Abia State, gave the admonition while speaking to journalists at the National Assembly on Tuesday in Abuja. He noted that research has shown that there are over 11,000 uncompleted projects scattered across the country. While noting that the completion of these projects will take the country out of debt, Kalu called on the new president to scrap the Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs and other government agencies that are no longer viable. Kalu, who reiterated that he is still in the race for the position of Senate president in the 10th National Assembly, also wants the administration to do everything possible to check the lingering security challenges that has ravaged parts of Nigeria. I would also like President Ahmed Tidibu to step on security, issue of security, and the people of Nigeria. And some of the ministries and parastatus are no longer viable. If I'm um, issue, something like uh, Minister of Niger Delta, some of those ministries are no longer viable to be ministries. We have NDTC, like we have the Northeast Development Commission, they have no ministry. So the ministry of Niger Delta should be scrapped off. Uh, reposition the NDDC to report directly to the president, which is what is in the act. That in the act, there's no way they say NDDC will report the ministry on Niger Delta. No, the answer is no. So they should allow the commission as a commission to be able to function purely as a commission. So I think I'm excited to see President Ahmed Bolatinibu and uh, all pe people of goodwill in Nigeria should be happy for Nigeria, should be happy for him, should be happy for his family. Those days of stealing public funds are gone. We are, we are planning and ready to return this country to the Nigerian people. Because Still in politics, the new governor of Sokoto State, Ahmed Aliou, assumed duty in office, assumed office on Tuesday after his inauguration on Monday. Aliyu arrived at the government house at noon. Abu Bakr Imam reports that the symbolic handing over of the instruments of authority did not take place as neither the outgone governor, Aminu Tambwal, nor any official of his government attended the ceremony. Aliyu vowed to review some of the policies of the former administration while elaborating his nine-point agenda Aliyu said he will give priority to security, health, and poverty eradication. The governor nullified all the recent appointments made by his predecessor, Amin Waziri Tambuel. He also nullified the recent renaming of some academic institutions and other appointments relating to their governing councils. His spokesman, Abu Bakr Bawa, on Tuesday announced dissolution of local government areas' sole administrators appointed by Tambuel. Bawa explained that the appointment will be reviewed in due course in the public interest. There is massive turnout of people across the entire Daura town in Katsina State following a special Daba organized by the Emir of Daura. The Daba's large turnout of special dignitaries from the Emirate, Katsina State and entire country. Several people also lined up on the street of uh, the Daura Emirates to witness the special occasion. The former president, Muhammad Buhari, received royal greetings from the emir, district heads and other well-wishers. Among the district heads are Yusuf Buhari, son to the former president, who also dressed in colorful regalia and adorned horses with an entourage. Also among is his uncle, Musa Haru, who is also a traditional title holder and a district head in the Emirate. Similarly, the special guest of honor in is the new governor of Katsina State, Dr. Umar Dikko Radda. His counterpart of Brno State, Professor Babagana Umar Azulum, was also in attendance. Other dignitaries are former chief of staff to the former president, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, Emir of Brno, former ministry, ministers of finance, disaster management, aviation, information and culture, and the national chairman of All Progressives Congress, Abdullahi Adamu.
The National Industrial Court has upheld the no work, no pay rule by the federal government in its dispute with the Academic Staff Union of Universities. The court held that the rule enforced by the federal government against members of ASU who went on strike last year is legal. In a judgment delivered by the president of the court, Justice Benedict Kanyip, the court held that it is within the right of the federal government to withhold salaries of workers who embark on industrial action. The court, however, held that it is a violation of university autonomy for the federal government to impose the integrated payroll and personnel information system platform on members of ASU who reserved the rights to determine how their salaries should be paid. The federal government had dragged ASU before the industrial court over the demand of the union for the payment of their salaries from February 14 to October 7 last year when the strike was called off. You're watching Trust News Updates coming up after the break. Mourners pay their respects to Raymond Dukbaisi. Do stay with us. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. You're still watching Trust News Update, a recap of our top stories. We told you that President Bola Tinubu's inaugural speech announcing end of fuel subsidy triggers fuel queues. NNPC welcomes move as Petroleum Regulatory Authority says it will ensure smooth transition to avoid supply disruptions. We also heard that President Tinubu, Vice President Shatima, resume work at Aso Rock. Moving to more stories, River State Governor Simina Lai Fubara has declared his administration's resolve to expand the existing socioeconomic opportunities in order to engender prosperity for all Rivers people. Governor Fubara stated this at Yakubu Gawan Stadium in Port Harcourt shortly after he was sworn into office. The report. In his inaugural address titled, Together, Let's Consolidate the New River State, Governor Fubara acknowledged the poor state of the national economy, but however promised that the administration will take measures to diversify River's economy and insulate it so that it can grow. He also assured of promoting the ease of doing business in the state and attract foreign direct investments capable of empowering Rivers people. Together, let's consolidate the new Rivers nation. We will prioritize the well-being of our states and our citizens with a renewed focus on economic goods, people-centered projects, and social services. We will improve the ease of doing business and sustain a regime that will attract local foreign direct investment to stimulate greater economic activity. Some residents of the state charged the governor to prioritize security, information technology, the environment, poverty reduction and unemployment within the next 
four years. In the areas of um, ICT, because of course we are in the 21st century, and we all know that ICT is a driving force for development. And I want the new administration to equally see how to develop the ICT sector, if possible, creates a full-fledged ministry for information and communication development. Especially in terms of um, employment, because employment is key, because once there is employment for the youth, the youth are being, are being physically carried along. Then also, I also expect, um, um, in terms of infrastructure and several other things, I expect a lot of things from this new administration especially with the with civil servants and workers and also the student body because i'm a student yes the student body should sh shouldn't shouldn't be left behind we have the confidence that it's going to continue from where the immediate past governor has uh, uh, you know from where the immediate past governor ended and we we believe we have hope we have confidence in him that is that going to be a tremendous change in River State. Governor Fubara, while vowing to be hard on crime and criminality, thanks civil servants for their support and promised regular payment of salary, gratuity, more training, promotion and housing for low-income earners. Mourners continue to troop the Abuja residents of Dark Communications PLC founder Raymond Dokbasi to pay their respects to the media icon who died on Monday. Edo State Governor Godwin Obaseki described the death as devastating news, saying his contribution to the evolution of private broadcasting is unprecedented. Zainab Garai reports. Aduma Hill, which plays host to the Dark Communications Office and residents of the late Dopasi, continues to receive visitors from far and near who come to condole with the family and associates of the founder of the media outfit. Among early callers to the residents is Governor Godwin Obasaki, who expressed shock over the death, saying the deceased's contribution to the media industry can never be forgotten. His foray into television also gave a platform to project Nigeria, not only locally, but globally. And beyond that, gave the impetus to others to follow. Uh, his trend he has started, which was that you could have successful private sector participation in media, particularly in television in Nigeria. So he was a pace setter in all ramifications. He was a pace setter um, in the way he approached things of, you know, of life. Other mourners said that the demise of Raymond Dopasi is not just a loss to the media stations he owned, but also in the broadcasting media. This is a man full of life. One man I can qualify as a detrabalized Nigeria. It's with everybody, irrespective of religion, tribe, or where you come from. And I can tell you in one word, a forest has gone off. Not just one tree. It's a forest. Democracy is an institution who a lot of interest groups in this country today We'll be having different consultation on his death. What I can say is, I pray God Almighty to forgive him all his sins. And Raymond, no doubt, no doubt, has made impact and etched his name on the footprints of time as one that has brought about a revolution in the Nigerian media space. A consideration register is open as the family plans burial arrangements. Zainab Karae, Trust TV News, Abuja. Away from Nigeria, at least 17 people have been killed by extremist rebels in eastern Congo's North Kivu province. Civilians were killed by fighters with the Allied Democratic Forces believed to be linked with the Islamic State group in the Bambuba Kisiki area in Beni territory on Monday. Conflict has been simmering for decades in eastern Congo, where more than 120 armed groups are fighting. Most are vying for land and control of mines with valuable minerals, while some groups are trying to protect their communities. 
According to the UN, since last April, ADF attacks have killed at least 370 civilians and several hundred people have been abducted, including a significant number of children. A group, the group also extended its area of operations to Goma and into the neighboring Ituri province. In sports, Juventus will, play, uh, will pay a €718,000 fine as part of a settlement agreement with Italian football authorities over a case concerning payment of player salaries. Juventus were docked 10 points last week over a separate investigation into the club's past transfer dealings. The settlement means Juventus have accepted the 10-point penalty and will not receive a further points deduction. It brings an end to any ongoing cases involving the Turin club, as well as the overall fine for the club. The Italian Football Federation gave fines to several officials, including former vice chairman Pavel Nedved and ex-sporting director and managing director Fabio Paratici. The club's former president, Andrea Agnelli, whose appeal against the two-year ban he received in January was upheld earlier this month, was not included in the latest deal and will have a separate hearing on 15 June. In a statement, Juventus said the agreement would allow the club to achieve a definite result and overcome a state of tension and instability. And with that, we've come to the end of Trust News Update. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Darshan Hussein Usman. Thanks for watching.